Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how to use Keyframe in DaVinci Resolve 17 so you can get started with creating animation. Let's check it out. Alright, so in DaVinci Resolve 17 right now we are on the edit page. To do some keyframing you can do it from the edit page but also from the fusion page. We're going to see that together right now. So to start off, we're going to go over to Effect Library here are titles and I'm gonna bring in my timeline a text plus titles for demonstration. So let's bring that in. And here we have a text. As you can see, there is no animation uh, on it yet. A quick thing that you could want to do here uh, directly from the edit page will be small animation like the opacity or the size. Uh, for the opacity, there is something even more simple than keyframing that you can do is here you have some sliders. You can just bring those points right there and it will just create a simple opacity animation. If we play it, here you go, it's come in and out. So that's not keyframing, or at least uh, you don't do it manually, the software is doing it for you. So that's a simple way to do an opacity uh, keyframe inside of the edit page uh, to start off. Basically, as I mentioned, uh, you can do some simple keyframing in the edit page, but as soon as you want to have a bit more control over your animation, you will have to go over to the Fusion page uh, so you can create something that looks cleaner and so you can have more possibilities. So for the time being, on the edit page, as I mentioned, you could want to uh, make some animation on the size or the tracking or the opacity. So I'm going to just show you quickly how you can do that and how it works. So what is keyframing? So basically, keyframing is simply here using any of those parameters to make a change of value by adding a point and then another point with a different value and then you will basically have a change uh, with your parameter. The best way to represent that right now, let's try it with size, is I'm gonna set a point at the beginning of my text right here, I have size, and by clicking on this little square right there, as you can see it become red and that means that I have set my keyframe point. That's the first keyframe point. As you can see, there is nothing happening because I haven't set a change of value yet. Then what I can do is I can go a bit further, let's say one second further from this point. And here I'm gonna increase the size and I'm gonna make the size a bit bigger. So as you can see, it's set another point. Right now it's become red. In between those, there is the, the point is not red, you know, like the, the points stay red only where you put the keyframe. But as you can see now, I have this third point and then it just changed the value to reach the value that I've set on the second point. So that's basically how keyframe work. It's very simple, there is nothing too complicated uh, about it. You just need to understand that it's a change of value from one point to another and then basically in between the change is gonna happen. So here let's say if I want to make it smaller again, I can just bring it down and it's gonna set another point to bring it down again. So let's play it. It's going up and then it's going down again. And you can just add as many keyframes as you want uh, and you can do that for pretty much every parameter. So then it's to you to define uh, what combination you want to make to create a nice animation. A very common combination will be, for example, to make an animation with the size and the tracking, or the size and an opacity, or the three of those in the same time. But as soon as you start to add more keyframes, I think it's better to go over to the Fusion page because it's going to be easier to manage and you're going to have more control over what you're doing. So to do so, I'm going to go at the beginning of my composition here at frame zero and I'm going to set all those keyframes. So first off, I want the size to be very big at the beginning. So let's just put it out of frame and we're going to add one keyframe. Then I'm going to expand the tracking and I'm going to add another keyframe. And then I'm going to go over to uh, shading, sorry, and I'm going to do the same with opacity and I want opacity to be at zero and I'm going to add my keyframe again. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go set my second set of keyframe. So in between the frame zero and the frame 24, the change gonna happen. So here I want my opacity to go back to one. So as you can see, it's gonna change from zero to 24. It's gonna go gradually from uh, uh, zero opacity to one opacity, making my text visible. Then I'm gonna go over to text again and here I'm gonna adjust the tracking and the size again. So here I want it to go down to maybe 
that and I'm gonna make the tracking also smaller like that the text even a bit smaller and here as you can see the change is happening gradually again we have both the opacity the tracking and the size all changing value at the same time and that's how you create simple animation now to smooth out your animation so you will have to play with curve so here if you open spline and that you tick all the boxes of the keyframe that you've put of the parameter basically that you've modified you can click on that button right here to showcase uh, all the keyframes that are available here i'm just going to select everything and going to hit s just to smooth out the animation I'm gonna link below to a video where I explain more about the span editor and how to use it, but it was just to show you that um, that's something that you probably will have to do. It's play with the smoothness of your animation to make it look better. Another tool that you can use in the edit page is here, you can open the window keyframe and it's basically gonna show um, all the keyframe that you've placed in your composition. So it's a great way to here adjust, let's say if you don't want it to last for um, 24 seconds, you can just move the point and make it last longer uh, or shorter. You just make those adjustments yourself. You can just open here. As you can see right now, I've just uh, moved the character spacing, but you can also move the opacity. You can move the size. And basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna make uh, your animation quicker or shorter depending on uh, if you extend it or not. Right now I've reduced it. So as you can see, it's quicker than it used to be because now I'm on uh, 12 frame instead of 24. My animation was taking longer before. Another thing to note is that here in Fusion, if you click on the node where you've added some keyframe, in your timeline, you will have a white line here to represent the keyframe that you've placed. Um, so here, if I'm adding another keyframe with the size, for example, right there, I'm on frame 24 right here. And as you can see, if I move my cursor, here it added uh, another keyframe at 24 frame, showing up also here in the keyframe window. And you can easily keep track of those. You can easily uh, just move them around or delete them by just hitting delete by selecting the keyframe. This is pretty much everything that you need to know in order to start using keyframe inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope this video was useful. Let me know in the comment what kind of tutorial you would like to see next and see you in the next one. Bye. Improve your video and speed up your workflow by using easy to use drag and drop templates made specifically for DaVinci Resolve. Check it out on our website, videoeditorstudio.com.